Haven't heard a word. No, I did not meet with the medical staff today. We're on a different schedule. Uh, you know, word after the game was they were going to have it uh, cool off a little bit and have the uh, surgeons look at it, our orthopedic surgeons look at it and, and let us know something. So I'll uh, probably call them here in a little bit if I don't see uh, Denny Miller in the next uh, little couple hours. We have a team meeting at 5.30, so I'm assuming he may come in before that. But I don't have any word for you. On but that. it is a need. That too. <laughs> what did you do last night to kind of celebrate? What did I do last night? Well, we didn't get back till pretty late, so I really didn't do anything other than unpack and put my clothes away and got ready for today. <laughs> Is that how you celebrate a big win over the bucket then, right? No, but we had to get a lot done, you know. <laughs> right. We had to get a lot done today, and I wanted to get in this morning and look at the film, and we had a lot of meeting. Uh, meetings that we had to take care of today with our staff because a lot of the coaches are going to go on on the road recruit. We had the banquet tomorrow night. We had to get the calendars out and look at the different uh, bowl possibilities and try to schedule out what days we might practice and what days we might recruit. So uh, really I just kind of went home and got organized a little bit so that today would be a little easier to deal with and we've been pretty busy today. What's uh, what's the schedule rest of the week for you, for, for you and the team? Well, what we're going to do, we're not going to practice again. We're going to meet here at 5.30 and we're going to talk about the banquet, some details as far as what they need to wear and where to go. And we're going to talk about the game some yesterday and talk about where we're at as a football team and some things that we want to try to get done uh, with our bowl preparation. But we're not going to practice at all this week. Uh, our coaches are going to go on the road after the banquet. Uh, we have a few that had to go on the road beforehand, which I don't like to do. I like for the coaches to be at the banquet. But there were a couple of recruiting um, circumstances that we had to get a handle on. And uh, then almost all of our coaches will be on the road, or at least seven at one time will be on the road uh, throughout the course of next week. We have a recruiting weekend uh, coming up, you know, this weekend coming up, so we'll bring some recruits in. Uh, but I don't anticipate practicing with a team again until a week from today. They'll have uh, today off other than the meeting, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday off. Give them a chance to get healed up, get back in the weight room some. Uh, we'll sit down tomorrow and spend a lot of time as a staff looking at exactly where we're at academically on each and every one of our football players and, and make sure we have a plan to um, keep them ahead of the game, if you will, in regards to academics and really just try to focus in on our business here the next couple of days because uh, practicing for the bowl and recruiting at the same time is, is, a, is a lot to go on and we have, we have to get it organized. You had mentioned after the game that Robert took himself out of the game because he was tightening up. Were you talking physically? Was there a, an injury of some sort that he was well, trying he to deal with? around some. I don't know if he if his hamstring had gotten tied or whatever it was, but he came out and he told Coach Nord that he that uh, he thought uh, Caleb should go, that he needed to, I don't know if he was breathing hard or, or had, uh, his hamstring had gotten tied. I don't have any idea. I just know he took himself out. And he made that real long run, and it looked like he was – straining pretty hard on the run as he was scrambling around and I thought he looked kind of stiff when he, when he stopped and turned around and came back so I didn't know if a hamstring or something or was tightening up or what but he, he took himself out and he was okay after that but uh, obviously he didn't think he could, he could do the best he could the next play so he put, put uh, Caleb in which I'm okay with. You mentioned your kickoff return team being pretty strong. What are the kind of key pieces that make it successful? Well obviously a great return man and we think we have some and we have a lot of good skill players on our football team but I think uh, Raheem Mostert is a special kickoff return guy, and you know he had, I believe, ten or eleven uh, kickoff returns in high school for touchdowns, and he had two in the All Star game, you know, against some of the top uh, players in the state of Florida. He has, he has a real knack for it, and uh, he is, uh, is a fantastic talent. And then Akeem Hunt back there, I think, is a is a really good for our kickoff return team because he's a good return man too, but he's also a very good off returner, and it takes uh, some uh, physicality to be the off returner because you usually pick up the one that's that comes free. You become kind of a mop up guy. You also have to make good decisions. Uh, you have to turn around and communicate at times with the returner uh, as far as when he needs to bring the ball out of the end zone. And and I think uh, we have a, a great duo back there. So I think it starts off with who you have back there as the return man and the off returner. And then really a lot of it has to do with the. Uh, execution of the shield blocks, the guys that are lined up across the front. I think that's one of the hardest things to do in all of football is to be one of the front guys on the kickoff return team because those guys that are uh, sprinting down the field in coverage, they get a head start 
and they're in a full sprint and they hit it they hit the line on the kick and they're in a full sprint you have to sprint back and get to a spot and flip around and eyeball them up and take them on and they got a full head of steam so i think the success that we've had with our shield blocks up front we've really gotten have gotten a lot better with our shield blocks up front the latter part of the season a lot of it has to do with guys that have been in there for a while and then they've gotten a lot of work at it and become journeymen at that uh, at that technique, if you will. So I think the shield blocks have been really been good. I think we have two really good kickoff return guys. I think that their uh, their uh, special teams coordinator is excellent. I think he's as good as, good as there is in the business. And we've also done a pretty good job with our uh, our tight ends or up back type personnel as far as making good decisions against in some of the windy games. I thought the play that. Uh, uh, Justin Sins made yesterday was a real heads up play, you know, getting a lot of a lot of work on those type of plays in practice. So I think everything about our kickoff return team has, has done pretty well this year. Uh, will you ask for a contract extension? Will I ask for one? Right. Or do... Well, I'm not going to get into all that right now. You know, I've got a, you know, had an extension on my contract a couple of years back, and you know, my contract is up for a renegotiation in December, and it's still November. And as soon as we sit down and, and, and uh, talk about it, we'll, we'll let everybody know something. I mean, do you, you know, after this year, you have three years left on your contract. Do, I mean, from a coaching perspective and recruiting, do you need four or five years when you go into homes and say, I'm going to be here for the entire career? Or does does that matter anymore? I think it helps. I don't know that it's the end all means because right now we have a top 30 ranked recruiting class. You know, and and haven't had the contract extension. It hasn't come to that point in time on the calendar. You know, so uh, when it gets to that point in time, we'll sit down and talk about it, and we'll let everybody know, you know exactly where it's at. But I think we've done very well recruiting up to this point. And I think it's certainly something that helps. But I don't know if you need it right now. We just had the game yesterday. Do you feel like what you've done in your three years, you deserve an extension after this season? I certainly do, but like I just said, I don't believe we're going to have this conversation right now. Okay, we're going to sit down when December rolls around, and when that time comes, it will sound and talk to talk everybody about it. So you said after the game yesterday that you'd be willing to talk about it tomorrow, just, which I is... I just <laughs> talked about it as, about as much as I'm going to, so that's how much I was willing to talk about it. Uh, did you feel any pressure going into yesterday's game? I want to win. I want to win. You know, he worked really hard, and... And, uh, you know, things work out the way they're supposed to. And uh, I felt like we have had a lot of successes uh, the last couple of years, but it's, it's never easy. But uh, I wanted to win, you know, for our, our players and our team and, and to be successful. The, the pressure comes from within. The pressure doesn't come from the outside. The pressure comes from within the competitor. And I'm a competitor, and our football team's competitive, and we want to win. And, and uh, to me, that's where the pressure comes from. The guys were describing the locker room after the game, you know, and said there were some coaches crying. It was just really an, an interesting emotional scene. I mean, what did you do when you got in there? You were hugging everybody, I think, on the yeah. field. So. Yeah. I, I wasn't with the team very long, you know. Yeah. It was, uh, took a while to get in here with the interviews and all that, but we just had a quick celebration, talked about how proud we were of our team mm -hmm. and uh, appreciated the great effort and them never giving up. And, you know, it's never been easy, but – held the bucket up and said, you know, this makes it worthwhile. And everybody cheered, and it's a pretty simple thing. And, and just your kind of your normal post-game celebration, you know, anytime you have a big win, there's a lot of celebrating in the locker room. I missed a lot of it yesterday, unfortunately, but it was great to be with the team in there and with the bucket. And it was a pretty pretty special moment in the locker room, that's for sure. We had a lot of guys who got injured. It looked like injured, not hurt. You know, like they weren't going to be able to come back, and they did. I mean, do you think that that's – says maybe the character of a guy like Josh Johnson or I suppose we could go down the list with those guys who have really been banged up the last two weeks and keep coming back. I thought there's uh, the, foot, the, the team did great yesterday and I think we've overcome some things throughout the course of the season. You know, we started the season off with, with our number three quarterback a week before we opened the season up, you know. and He's done a heck of a job and he played a great game yesterday and he played really well throughout the course of the season, but you know, that's uh, a challenge in some ways and then and we we don't have uh, Kenny Palou, who had been a four-year starter for us, and then we lose Peter Dry, you know, who had been a two-year starter for us, and I think he's one of our better offensive linemen, you know. And then uh, we lost uh, uh, Ryan Isaacs, who's a really good football player, and, and you need three or four tough guys in there to bang around with, you know. And also uh, Robert Macy, you know, and to lose those four or five interior guys, particularly in a real physical league like we play in. And, and particularly how it's been the latter part of the season. I think our guys showed a lot of courage, went out there and they 
found a way to win, and I think that yesterday was a great demonstration or a sign of our, of our football team, you know, growing and developing and, and learning how to win. I was very proud of our football team. They they, they won yesterday and, and and played well, and they and they've done that throughout the course of the season. And I think that we've learned to win uh, this season, and, and being able to go into postseason play is a huge step for our football team. And we talked about it on Friday night that. The game against IU and the bucket game and qualifying for postseason play, that's not how we're wrapping up the season. That's how we're beginning the, 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 uh, our next step, you know, uh, the, the championship level play, you know. So uh, a great sign for our team and a great sign for our program all the way around, absolutely. Do you think having this week off will really benefit your guys, you know, a little time to rest as you get banged up towards the end of the season? I know it will. You know, any time that you feel good, you play good. and. And uh, these guys have sucked it up, and, and you know, we had 50-something plays on offense yesterday in the first half. You know, and I mean, how many reps has Dennis Kelly had, you know, around here in the last four years? You know, so I know he could use some time off. You know, and when we come back in practice, I don't know how many practices we'll, we'll have you know, between now and the bowl game. But I'm not interested in maxing out on practices. I'm interested in taking some steps as a football team and a football program. Uh, there's some things that we can do a better job of from a on-the-field playing standpoint that we want to get addressed right now and start moving in that direction immediately. You know, So, again, yesterday wasn't the end of the season. In, in our minds, it was the beginning of championship play. Right. You know, so we're excited about that. Do you get 15 practices before you go to the bowl site? I'm not sure exactly how many we get, <laughs> but I got the calendar out, and, and we'll be hard-pressed to get 15 okay. if we're going to recruit some, too, and give them some time off and then – you know, maybe get them out of here a little bit before Christmas. Again, I'm not concerned about maxing out on the number of practices. I'm concerned about taking some steps as a football team. We we need to be a much more disciplined football team if we're going to win championships uh, at, at Purdue. You know, and we're, we need, we're going to have to, we're going to, have to play better, you know, and, and coach better, and we're going to address some things and start pressing forward you know, today. Is that? Are you talking about penalties as an example? Yeah, penalties of that? and misassignments and misalignments. Just you know, the same things that uh, that make it uh, difficult for you to play as well as you can. We still uh, need to continue to improve. So I'm really glad that we have a chance to be where we're at and have some practices and something to play for and, and some goals and direction you know, for our team. And that's those are the things we're going to focus on. Some of those young guys, when you do practice, are going to be the guys who really get the time. Can you talk specifically about Taylor Richards and Frankie Williams? And you know, one guy's red shirting, one's not. But those could be two pretty important guys for you next season. Well, there's a lot of guys on our team. All of our young guys will get a lot of reps. We'll go out there and we'll get some reps with the, uh, the, the I don't want to call them the varsity players, but the ones that have played the most. You know, the, the Dennis Kelly and Shepard and Schmeig and and uh, you know some of those guys. They don't need as many reps. You know, we'll get some reps with our you know, young quarterbacks. Also, uh, some reps with our young skill players. We want to get uh, the some of the twos that don't play a whole lot. You know, uh, uh, Joe Gilliam and and Mike Lee and and uh, Kalana Judd and J Jelani Phillips and Michael Rouse and all those guys need to get a lot of reps. So we'll go out and we'll practice and get, what we done, get done what we have to get done in order to get our team ready to play and win and then maybe extend the length of the practices some and get uh, some of the backup players a lot more reps. But I don't see uh, going out there and trying to uh, max out on the, the number of practice days. I want to make sure that we get our, our, our players fresh and, and refocused again. I know Frank was a guy you talked about maybe hoping maybe you shouldn't have redshirted, I guess. I mean, why? I think he's a heck of a football player and I think when it was all said and done that he was probably probably wouldn't have, would have been a better fourth corner than the two seniors that really held that spot down the majority of the season. And we we were fortunate that uh, Josh Johnson was able to hold up, you know, right before camp started. Uh, there was uh, a medical report where he had a a, a, a foot injury and one that they would, wasn't sure how long it would last and that was a real concern so we ended up moving Normando back over there because he had ended the season last year as our third corner and had Josh not held up then whoever was the fourth corner was someone that was going to be projected into playing time he would have been the nickel back or the third corner to go in the game and the fact that Josh held up that fourth corner never had to really make a difference in, in, the, in the season at any point in time from a personnel standpoint. And I think that Frankie would have been a better fourth corner than the two seniors that we had in that spot, uh, Charlton Williams and when Mike Gurgle uh, was, was still uh, competing at that position. And I think that he could have been a, uh, a difference maker for special teams-wise. He's really aggressive and he's really fast and, and uh, 
very physical, and on the scout team, he just gives us a fit. You know, so I think he could. I think he could help us win this year. I noticed that the bucket's not in the case over there. Do you know where it's actually located right now? You don't have it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a good question. I don't know where.